In this video, I'm going to discuss some famous probability problems that show how even experts can get these questions completely wrong. I think what people struggle with is that there are often conditions involved that make a big difference in the answer. It's often difficult to know how to approach a problem to get the right answer. And even when you do get an answer, it's hard to tell if the answer makes any sense. As you'll see in a second, correct probabilities can be extremely counterintuitive. At the end of this video, I'll lay out some general tips for probability problems that I hope will help. And my next couple videos will take you through several different kinds of probability examples. Please subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more. In 1990, Marilyn Vos Savant, the world record holder for highest IQ, wrote an advice column in Parade magazine. Someone wrote in asking for advice on the game show Let's Make a Deal, hosted by Monty Hall. The way the game works is you are asked to choose one of three doors. Behind two of the doors is a goat, and behind one door is a new car. So your probability of choosing the car at random is one in three, or about 33%. Now what happens is Monty will open one of the doors that you did not choose that has a goat behind it. You'll have one chance to stick with your initial choice or to switch to the remaining door. It seems obvious that the probability is now 50-50 of selecting the car. Marilyn's response to the question, however, was that you double your chances of winning if you switch. Well, Marilyn got a mountain of hate mail from PhD mathematicians from top-tier institutions around the country. Here are some of my favorite quotes. There is enough mathematical illiteracy in this country and we don't need the world's highest IQ propagating more. Shame! May I suggest that you obtain and refer to a standard textbook on probability before you try to answer a question of this type again? You made a mistake, but look at the positive side. If all those PhDs were wrong, the country would be in some serious trouble. If you want to read more about this or the following examples, check out the sources in the description of this video. Okay, let's see what's going on here. First, let's visualize the three possible arrangements of the items behind the doors. Now to explain this, let's choose a door. This works no matter what door you choose. For this demo, let's choose door number two. Okay, so it's true that the probability that we chose the car is one in three. Now let's go case by case. In arrangement number one, Monty opens door number three to show a goat. If our strategy is to switch, in this case we win. In arrangement number two, Monty can open either door number one or number three. Let's say he opens door one to reveal a goat. If we switch in this case, we lose. Finally, in arrangement number three, Monty will open door number one to show a goat. And if we switch, we win in this case. So as you can see, if we follow Marilyn's advice and switch, we will win two out of three times, effectively doubling our chances from the outset. What everyone was missing was they were not viewing this as a conditional probability problem. Here's a question that according to a German statistician, only about 20% of doctors answered correctly. The prevalence of COVID-19 for my age group, I'm in my 30s, and geographic location, New York, is about 2%. By the way, last year was perfect, but this year I'm in the prime of my life. See if you can figure out my exact age and put it in the comments. The test has a sensitivity of 91% and a specificity around 99%. Sensitivity is the rate of true positives, and specificity is the rate of true negatives. So in a sense, these are measures of accuracy of the test. You test positive for COVID-19, what are the chances you actually have the disease? You might think because of the accuracy of the test, the chances are somewhere in the 90 to 99% range that you have the disease. I'm gonna do the calculation using my personal favorite technique for this type of problem, a weighted tree diagram. So, a priori, I either have the disease or I don't with probability 2% or 98%. Next, whether we have the disease or not, the test could come back positive or negative. I'll weight the branches with the sensitivity and specificity given and subtract from one to get the complementary probabilities. Once the tree is constructed, multiply the branches to get the compound probability of each outcome. A quick check you can do is to make sure the total is one or 100%. 
If I add these two probabilities, I'll have the probability of testing positive. Now, to calculate the conditional probability of having the disease, given that I tested positive, I need to divide the probability of both having the disease and testing positive by the probability of testing positive. This is called Bayes' rule. The answer is a surprisingly low 65%. This is called the base rate fallacy because even though the test has a high accuracy rate, the base rate of the disease is very low. So we cannot forget to factor in the rarity of the disease when evaluating test results. Sudden infant death syndrome, or SIDS, occurs with a probability of about 1 in 8,544. Sally Clark, a mother of two children who died of SIDS, was put on trial for their deaths. A pediatrician and expert witness testified that the probability of two SIDS cases in one household, one in 8,544, times itself, which is one in 73 million. Now, the probability of two events, A and B, is only equal to the product of each probability if the events are independent. The cause of SIDS is unknown but it is believed to be linked to genetic and or environmental factors. So it is likely that these events are dependent. If we know one child died of SIDS, the genetic or environmental risk factors may make it more likely for a second similar death. To make matters worse, the press reported that the probability of Miss Clark's innocence was 1 in 73 million. This is called the prosecutor's fallacy. Saying there's a one in a million chance the DNA on the weapon handle is a false positive match is not the same as saying there is a one in a million chance of your innocence. Sally Clark was ultimately convicted in part due to the incorrect statistics. In the 1970s, a claim was made that UC Berkeley was discriminating against female applicants. But when looking at admissions data for each individual program within the university, it appeared as if males were less likely to be accepted. Simpson's paradox is the phenomenon that when viewing data overall, we see the opposite relationship that exists when viewing the data stratified into categories. Here is a plot from an AP stats exam that displays an overall positive association between number of semesters and starting salary. However, when categorized by major, we see a series of negative associations. This demonstrates that we should be careful to consider several perspectives before drawing an appropriate conclusion. As promised, here are some approaches to try when solving a probability problem. First thing I try is list all the possible outcomes. That might not be feasible if there are many, many outcomes. Use a tree diagram, a Venn diagram, or a table. It's important to know when events are independent or dependent and to use the correct multiplication formula for AND. It's also important to know when events are mutually exclusive or inclusive and apply the correct addition formula for OR. Use Bayes' rule to calculate conditional probability and to live your life. What I mean is that Bayes' rule teaches us to update our model when we are presented with new information. Try to expose yourself to as much information as you can and constantly update your view of the world around you. To finish, we're going to encounter some specific cases in the next couple videos. These are usually solved with technology. The first is binomial probability. These are cases that are binary, meaning two outcomes, independent, the number of trials is fixed, and the success probability remains constant. They typically ask us to find probability of X successes in N total trials. The second is geometric probability, which is the same as binomial probability, except we don't have a fixed number of trials. These are questions that ask us to find the probability of the first success occurring on the kth trial. And finally, we have normal probability questions. This is when the population is approximately normally distributed, or we're looking at a sampling distribution where the large counts condition or the central limit theorem are met. These are questions that ask us to find the probability that a continuous variable like temperature is greater than a certain value on a randomly selected day in August. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and check out my other videos. I've linked to my sources and other videos in this series. As always, may the math be with you.